we're all gonna have this AI. What you'd rather have between between these and this? If you love what you do, then there's nothing like the rush of having a great. So idea. many, you know, new technologies, but time is still time. Welcome to another episode of Layers Podcast. Layers as a brand showcases art, fashion, design and tech. On Layers Podcast, the aim is to bring together conversations with individuals from creative industry and give you behind the scenes look at their work. You can expect to hear conversations regarding their story, their process and ultimately get an outlook on their vision Today, I'm going to feature an artist uh, with a really interesting story to tell. Um, her name is Trisha, and we're recording actually at a gallery in Norwood, South Norwood. Yeah, South Norwood, you know, just near Croydon. And one of my interests to, you know, to feature this gallery as part of our strategy for the year, for Liz, is um, because of the uniqueness, because of the location, and because of how diverse um, it is in terms of the artworks and you know, the kind of exhibitions and the workshops that we have. So I've been kind of you know monitoring that since um, meeting the the owner Elizabeth James. Um, you know I met her last year at a, at an event. Um, and since then I've been quite you know keen to kind of just you know learn more. So but today I'm going to be speaking to Trisha and essentially Trisha has got a project. It's called the Harry Art um, Project. And I'm going to, you know, try and um, gain more insight into that. And hopefully you guys you know, will enjoy the, the interview. So, Trisha, nice to meet you. We've uh, been speaking now for over an hour, just talking about so many things. Um, but essentially, if you can give a small introduction about this song. Okay. Thanks, thanks yeah. so much um, today. Thanks for having me and featuring the Elizabeth James Gallery. Um, on your layers platform. It's really a privilege. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, there is a lot going on here in South Melbourne at the Elizabeth James Gallery. And um, I, of course, am Trisha Trotman Maraj, and I am from Trinidad and Tobago, but I live in London, UK, um, within the Croydon area as well. Uh, I have a project, it's called the Current Art Project. Okay. And this is something um, that I started back in 2015, okay. at the end of 2015, mm-hmm. and officially registering the company in uh, 2017. Mm-hmm. And um, I saw certain gaps in the society when I came here from the Caribbean in, as regards to um, not being able to find content, um, de- decoration rather, paintings or anything like that to decorate my home that represented where I came from, which is the Caribbean. And we love bright colors and you know, it's a very, very vibrant part of the world, lots of sunshine, happy people. And um, so I decided to paint after 27 years of not painting. And okay. um, again, you know, my husband came home in the evening and he saw this piece of wood there and asked me why I bought it and I said, you know, I painted it and he, he didn't know that I could paint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so and this is where it started. Yeah. And, um, you know, my journey, it has been, uh, it, it has had its ups and downs, more ups than downs rather. Yeah. And I was so happy mm-hmm. uh, to be introduced to Elizabeth James at the gallery. But how it actually came about is a story by itself. Yeah, because easy. yeah, I um, you know, I I registered the company, I started the project, put up the website, things like that, and started going out uh, to galleries in my community, showing them the work that I was producing, and they said, you know, it's nice, but it's it's not our type of art, and. I don't know, maybe that's a quote for something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and mm. for every gallery that I visited mm. and was rejected, each of those people said, well, you know, why don't you go to Elizabeth James? Mm. Um, maybe she would like that type of work. 
and I didn't know who this Vajrayi was. Mm. And I think, well, why are all of these people sending me to take this Vajrayi? Anyway, I went online, I found out about Lisa Vajrayi's gallery, found her address, gave her a call, and she set up an interview. Because I said, you know, I'm going to come and talk with you, I'm doing a project right now. And so really she said, okay, great, you can come across. And I did. And, you know, I came to meet Miss James with my daughter, who at the time was three. And as soon as I entered the gallery, I saw two young people there that I knew, um, that I had been teaching before. <laughs> I mean, I've been a teacher for uh, more than 21 years now. And um, so they greeted me, and then I met Elizabeth. And before she attended to me, she saw my daughter, she spoke with her, she brought her to the table pulled out some colored pencils, gave her some paper, sat her down and said, okay, let's do business. <laughs> and that was the sale for me. That sold me immediately. Um, she was so warm, so welcoming and so catering, not only to me as an artist and someone who was leading a project, but also to my child who was three years old. And this is something I didn't get at the other galleries that I had gone to. And I said to myself, you know, this is somebody I definitely want to work with. And coming away from the meeting that day, we had set up my first live art session at the gallery, which On is something. Yes, exactly, yeah. on the very first day. Yeah. So the live art is actually a session that uh, the gallery has on a Saturday. So you can actually walk in and, and see artists create. So you can just come in off the street. You don't need to make an appointment or anything like that. And you can come in and you can see work in progress. And, you know, I was a bit nervous because I said to her, you know, I hadn't painted in front of anybody before. I, I don't think I want to, you know, open myself up. <laughs> she said, you know, it's fine. You know, she's had that experience. She made me very, very comfortable. And so I brought in a piece uh, that I had started and I wanted to finish it on that day. And the title of this piece was Relics of Days Gone By, and it featured an old um, water wheel, which was part of a sugar plantation in Tobago, all right, part of my country. And this is a piece, you know, it, it really drew a lot of people in. People who were passing on the streets came into the gallery, people who were driving their cars, because it's a busy place. It's a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's right, you know, like it's right it's by the road. On so the main road, road, everything yeah. is happening here. Yeah. So people were passing in their cars, they were sitting in traffic and they were looking in, some people parked and they came in and they started to cry, they wanted to know more, they wanted to know, you know, if I had more stuff, you know, that they could see, if I was doing an exhibit, when I was doing the exhibit. I was really pleasantly surprised, you know, all of the positivity of the community actually embracing what I was doing at Elizabeth James Gallery. And of course, that Saturday was indeed a success. And so we talked some more, Elizabeth and I, and she said, you know, the next step is to do your own exhibition. And I breathe in so deeply. <laughs> so, so I'm just, I'm just gonna, um, I mean, thanks for explaining that. I'm just gonna quickly ask you a quick question. Um, when, you know, how long, how old is the brand? You know, how old is um, you know, current art? I mean, now, you know, current art, yeah. um, officially, yeah. uh, the company uh, when did you sort of register? You registered sort of in started? February of 2017. Okay, so, so about, two, about two years now. Oh, yeah, so yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 one year, one year, yeah, one year, definitely, one year, we are in February. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so, definitely. So one year. Oh, and, and you know, what, what I wanted to ask was, as with you know, every project, there's, there's always a purpose and there's always an aim, mm -hmm. and you know, there's, there's always a deeper meaning. You know, part of the reason you know there's going to be in this because I believe that there's a story to tell, you know, in creative in the space, and you know, every project has like a purpose and stuff. You know, if you can briefly just tell us, what, what would you say? Is the, what's the purpose of you know, of like the projects? But the, the, the purpose, and you know, thanks for asking, the purpose of the project mm -hmm. is to immortalize Caribbean cultural heritage on the campus. Okay. And by that I mean traditional ways of living in the Caribbean. And these are the traditions that would have been passed down from generation to generation, dating all the way back to African slavery, Amerindians, you know, because the country where I come from is 
very cosmopolitan, multicultural, multi-ethnic, every single mix that you can think about, you can find in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. And, you know, when I, I came here and I found that I couldn't find work, I couldn't find stuff that actually represented my part of the world, I saw a gap. And then I said to myself, you know, why just open this door for me? Why not open it for other artists as well? So I came up with the Carib Art Platform, yes. which is a platform for Caribbean artists, people who are doing artwork in the Caribbean, to be able to access global markets with their work via the Carib Art Project. And we have since partnered with uh, the Elizabeth James Gallery, where we are able to promote and sell the work of artists, not only within the UK, but particularly so the Caribbean, where I'm from. So people no longer really need to migrate, to come here Gosh. to set up or go through 100 rejection letters from, yeah, from different <laughs> you know, different galleries, galleries that, you know, don't take that type yeah, of work. work. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. Is, um, which is an interesting, um, you know, discovery because, um, I mean, I guess, you know, I, myself, I've visited a lot of galleries because um, I'm, not, I'm not an artist, I don't paint as such. I'm more of an enthusiast, I guess. You know, um, I guess the kind of feedback or the kind of, how can I say it? You know, the, the, the kind of experience I would have in galleries as someone that's visiting is different from what an artist would have. So, and then that brings me to my next point. So, do you feel like, you know, the art world as it is, do you feel like it's um, diverse enough? Or do you feel like galleries um, push the envelope to, to different cultures or would you say it's you know they have a certain specific you know um, words that they accept maybe it is but i haven't seen it okay yeah mm. maybe some people can claim that it is mm. but um as a caribbean artist and even after speaking to other caribbean artists that has really been our experience um even when looking at uh, particularly diversity um, in this part of the world, I have seen a lot of work um, uh, from people who are not European or of European descent, um, but mostly people coming out of Africa, and that seems to be a big thing now. Um, however, I haven't really seen Caribbean people, because we are an Italian region. And many of us, even though we would have come out from Africa, yeah. you know, via slavery and colonialism, mm -hmm. uh, we are still very distinct in how, you know, we were culturalized, the environment that we grew up in, and the traditions and so on that we still keep, which is actually a melting pot of so many cultures yeah. from around the world. And it is something that you don't find everywhere. It is exceptionally unique. Yeah. And it ought to be celebrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, I believe you know um, that's important because I've been you know checking some of the Instagram feeds and stuff, and just looking at the diverse. You know, you've got kind of projects like you were days I think a few days ago. Yes. You were and, you were and, stuff. and you know that that's a you know that's a really big part of the community you know, being able to get people together. Um, you know, and kind of have those experiences, you know, through, you know, through painting. Um, I mean, in, in terms of, you know, funding and you know, stuff for the projects, like what kind of avenues have you pursued to kind of get your, you know, kind of get your self and stuff? Well, as regards to funding again, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, they're not as embracing of this type of work because um, immediately when you apply for funding they want to know well all right what is your target audience who are the people who would actually appreciate this type of work and i think um the misconception you can't appreciate it um so you know we have written uh to businesses um because at the moment we have um the elizabeth james uh hosting the caribat uh, Croydon Schools Art Festival and um, funding wise we really haven't had that support okay. you know from the businesses and this is something that we would like to see more of and I guess you know once they get to know us and what we're doing I'm sure they will support because we are still quite new um, as regards to approaching the Council of Arts yeah, yeah. Um, we've actually done that so hopefully this year 
they're yeah. going to give us a positive response because they didn't give it last year. Yeah. yeah so we are hoping that that comes through. Um, I have approached also my um, my commission, and they have been in from inception, you know, in full support of the project. So that when we launched it officially here at the Elizabeth James Gallery on the 24th of October in 2017, we actually had the High Commissioner of Trinidad and Tobago coming out to the gallery and being present at the mm-hmm. launch and, yeah. you know, endorsing it, right? And um, later on this year, I think it's supposed to be in the month of June or so, um, we will be having the Caribbean exhibition um, at the High Commissioner of Trinidad and Tobago in London. Yeah, yeah. So where, where is that? What, what area is that? Uh, it's it's more central London around Hyde Park I'm area, like, oh, oh, yeah, so, um, yeah. sit that circular yeah, area that's where like, all of the oh, embassies are located. Yeah, so it's yeah, the that's same. Quite, that's the embassy. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. Um, when is it? June. It would be in June, and we're going to publicise the date yeah, closer soon. to yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, something for um, you know, definitely, you know, how we have it so. Oh, I'd definitely love to have you there, of course. So, yeah, it'll be really good. Um, so I remember I was reading up about the, you know, the, the project and I was on the website and a few words, um, you know, when you're sort of explaining it, you know, the, La Diables? La Diables. La Diables. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Papa Boys. Papa Bois. Papa Bois. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, uh, that, that's great, <laughs> isn't it? It's, it's a French Creole. French Creole. Um, yeah. In Trinidad, they call it Patois. Yeah. And it's a language like a broken French. Okay. Um, yeah. That was spoken by the slaves during slavery yeah. to communicate with each other. Yeah. Um, because our country was actually owned by so many other countries. We owned by the French, the Spanish, mm-hmm. the Dutch, the English, and so on. So that the language changed and then it mixed and mingled. Oh, and so that today we speak what they call a Trinidadian Creole. Okay. Which is a language by itself, a language of grammar. Even though we use a lot of English words, but mm. we use other words from other languages as, as well. well. Okay. But it's 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 a language of grammar. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, th- those words. What do they? What do they? Uh, what do they mean? What does that mean? For example, well, it's you have to explain <laughs> it to, to like, uh, like a British audience, or so, they don't understand. So, la jablesse, yeah. because we do the storytelling um, workshops here oh, okay. with right. children. Um, ages from about 3 to 12 mm. and then we have the teen workshops we call it teen makafushi okay. workshops again another patois yeah. word and um, the kids workshop focus um, more on the Caribbean folklore okay. so that those terms that you just use the latter bless and the duen and papa mm. are and actually soko, soko, soko characters yeah. sukunya Sukunya. Yes. Sukunya. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sukunya. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. they they are actually um, characters, folklore characters yeah. that you know when we were small we were told stories about, yeah. and you know back in those days um, the country wasn't as bright or developed you know as it is now. So many people lived on like what used to be former cocoa estates and mm. um, sugarcane plantations that have come out of slavery, and there was no electricity. Okay. There was no running water for the most part, and living in deep forested area, you know, there is an experience in the bush that you can't explain to someone who has not been there. Okay. And yeah. um, it's the Sukunya, for example, mm-hmm. is said to be an old person, could be a male or a female, okay. who lives in the village. Yeah. That during the night time takes off their skin ah, and transforms into a ball of fire mm. and travels across the sky, wow. going to different houses or a particular house and visiting people as they sleep and sucking their blood. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's like, um, like a Caribbean like vampire. Caribbean, like a vampire, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that the, the person or the victim wouldn't actually know about it because it, what it does, it puts you in a deep sleep so that you're unaware it's taking place. But when you get up in the morning, you may see, like for example, a large circular reddish mark on your leg or your hand or wherever it sucked you. 
and eventually as the days go by it will go from red to blue back and each day it will pain more and more and it's not something it's not a mark that you could really um place having got by hitting something mm -hmm. or you know you, you can't really place where you got the mark from so they, they're saying it, it's actually a souvenir actually a few years ago yeah. when this um Oh my gosh, this group visited um, Trinidad and Tobago, Ghost Hunters International. Okay. And I think there's a clip of it on YouTube where they visited my country. Mm. And they went to um, the Lupino uh, Estate, which is an old, very, very old estate. When you go out there, it's an absolute different feeling. You can't see on the camera, but you feel mm. the place has a feeling. And they went to film there because there's no to have a lot of supernatural activity. That's a place? That even, like, now, like even now, even now, so, yeah. because it is said that the owner of the plantation, Count Lopino, was said to be very, very cruel to the African slaves that he kept. Oh, and there was wow. a lot of torture and things that took place on that plantation. So they went there because they had heard stories of the Sukunian different um, superstitious characters yeah. that were present. And they actually have footage, it is on YouTube, of a ball of light yeah. going across the sky, wow. not being propelled by anything, but moving with purpose. Mm. Moving, stopping in a tree, and then moving forward, and they actually have a cat running away from it yeah. across the, second, the cemetery and the yeah. plantation. Yeah. Yeah. So they were able to find evidence to back up the stories that yeah. we yeah. have been told. Yeah. As children of things that actually existed and the fact that we have to be very careful of how we slept. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you were female and you didn't want to be harassed by a sukunya, yeah. you would wear your underwear on wrong side, yeah. <laughs> back to front. Yeah. Or if you found the skin of a sukunya mm -hmm. and you didn't want that person to be able to return to the skin, you would rub salt in the skin. Or if you knew it was visiting your house, you will put salt along the walls and the windows and the doors of your house. And once it enters, it will have to pick up every single or count every grain of salt. And it would take them so long that before they were finished, the sun would rise. And of course, the sun is not a good thing for a sukunya. It dies if it is formed without yeah. its skin. Yeah. So that's just one of the characters. And then we have Papa Gua, who is said to be father of the forest. Yeah. where he protects the animals from hunters and things like that. He's supposed to be half man and half animal. Okay. Um, then there is the Dwen, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be the spirit of little children, who babies or children who would have died before they were baptized or christened, and they live in the forest waiting to lead other children astray. Wow. So they can also die and join them in the forest mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And the... the um, let your bless. That yeah, one, <laughs> you can pronounce it. Yeah. The Laja Bless yeah. is said to be an absolutely beautiful woman. And you would see her standing on the road at night in a long, flowing dress okay. covering her legs. She would have one foot on the road mm -hmm. trying to flag down a passerby to give her a ride. And in yeah. those days, they used to travel with a horse and carriage. Yeah. And um, so you would see her and you would think, well, all right, this is a beautiful woman. Why is she out in the forest here in the dark by herself? And, you know, people would start to pick her up. But what they would not see is the fact that she had one good foot mm -hmm. and one cow foot. And that foot was always hidden in the grass mm -hmm. and hidden by her long dress. Oh. So that by the time you picked her up, she wouldn't say anything to you. But for the men who did that, yeah. they would, you know, try to carry conversation and they said that's how the spirit would catch you and take you away. Mm -hmm. However, if you lit a lamp or a cigarette or something like that, it didn't like light and it would yeah. immediately yeah. transform into the heinous creature that it was yeah. and flee from yeah. you. So that's just, you know, so a, a few, a few of, the, of the, yeah, characters. the characters. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really interesting. So I guess... Using those characters and using, I guess, the, those stories and the myth, like the fairy the tales, like those, you know, I guess, what can we call them? Um, the, I mean, it's, what would you describe them? It's, it's called Caribbean folk folklore. Folklore, yeah, yeah. folklore. Yeah. So, like each island, some islands, they fall at the same thing. 
but other islands they have different names. But, but in the description, the same, it's, it's the same, same type, type of, of, like, of yeah, character. character. Something else I read actually, it's, it's about you know, 2010 um, publication, um, I think it's called West Indian Chronicles. Chronicles Mami. Yes. It's, it's a book. That you yeah, can it's a book that I um, uh, was published in, in 2010. Yeah. And um, it was written by me um, largely to document okay. the role of um, women in Caribbean society okay. and some of the issues that were being faced by different generations of women and actually how they approach the situation based on their financial position, their level of education, and, and the time, you know, post-colonialism coming out of, of slavery. Yeah. Um, that book was actually uh, picked up by the University of Münster in Germany, and it's part of the uh, global academic uh, project of Englishes across the world representing uh, my region. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, and, I mean, is this still available to be purchased? Uh, it's on Kindle, presently, oh, right. okay, so yeah. you should be able to go there. Uh, of course, if you're in Trinidad, maybe you can get that all of the libraries as well. Um, it's been a while, and I'm actually looking to republish with someone else. Yeah. So, until I find someone who I can move with, yeah. you know, yeah. it's on, available on Kindle. Okay, yeah. okay. cool. The one thing that's, that's evident in the book up really works in here with you know, the, 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 the Carib Art Project and you know, there's a lot of, you use, you know, vibrant colours and you use a lot of, um, yeah, you know, like there's a lot of detail to, you know, to the paintings. And what, what I wanted to, you know, to, I guess to ask was, um, you know, that's important, you know, in, in any sort of art projects and stuff, um, essentially, you know, like turbulent times, you know, because that colours, you know, having that kind of vibrancy, you know, it can help the soul. Um, I guess in your own words, uh, why is it so important? You know, you know, to, use therapy, to use like different colors, yeah. Color, color is therapy. Okay. It brings life to you. Mm -hmm. There is something. I mean, I've seen a lot of artists. You know, they focus on like portraits. Yeah. Um, some people love to do um, infrastructure, buildings, and things like that. Um, for me, I love still life. I love um, vegetation, the mm. natural environment, mm. and I think the world knows if you want good food, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're bound to get it in to the Caribbean, yes, and if you're a Trinidadian, yeah. oh, most definitely so. Mm. So these are the things that always bring good memories for me yes. about living in the Caribbean. And I wanted to share that and um, share our cuisine, share our culture, our food culture with the rest of the world. Um, the details are important and the reason why I include so much details, like for example, this piece at the back of you here yeah. is called roasted bygum. And bygum is what you call um, eggplant. Yes. We call it also melon gel. Mm -hmm. And um, this is how we cook it. Yeah. So it's done on an open fire, it's roasted, we scrape out the insides and we fry it up with onions and garlic and pepper, so tomatoes and all of the things you see that that's a recipe by itself. Yeah. Another people, not a lot of people know about it because I've had people come into the gallery whilst I was painting this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I say, you know, what is, what is this, you know, how, how do you use it, mm -hmm. how do you um, cook it and, and I had to explain it. Yeah. You know what? I don't know. Maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll try this. And that's what it is about: is introducing this part of the world to where I have come from. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's a good place. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people have they have done a lot of reports and things like that yeah, about misconceptions, of what misconceptions and negative things yeah. Yeah. about the Caribbean. But growing up in the Caribbean, I can tell you I've had a very, very high quality of life. Um, very, very lovely experiences that I would not trade for the world at all. And this is something that I really wanted to share because I felt that if I had the opportunity to grow up in a place where I had the exposure to so many things and so many cultures, ways of cooking and, you know, people, I mean, because my family is mixed, 
um, coming from the indigenous uh, Amerindians of Trinidad yeah. and Tobago, yeah. the Caribs, yeah. and then um, the East Indians, my, my mother's father coming out um, from there because they came from um, India under you know, contracts, contract. all right, okay. indentureship. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the largest groups of them were actually deposited in Trinidad and Guyana, even though they were in other islands, the largest groups came to our country. And, um, you know, because of that, it, it's such a rich culture. Yeah, you, you, you can't experience it. I, I don't see it. Yeah. I don't see people here experiencing yeah. that. Yeah. And I think they're really, really missing out. Yeah. And I wanted to share that with, with yeah. them through, yeah. through the art. Yeah. Not only them, but their children, yeah. Yeah. you know, and so yeah. on, bringing in the older adults, Caribbean people. Yeah. Adults, to, yeah. Share as well their experiences. Because what I was going to say was um, ultimately it's, it's about I guess, the next generation, isn't it? Yeah. Like, then, you know, here is important and now, but of course, you know, the future is definitely you know, is also important. Um, you know, talking of future, um, what would you say you know the future holds for um, for the projects? Um, <clears throat> I see big things. Okay. Because the vision is global. So, Karim art is being taken to the world. So it's not just here in Europe. Um, we come as well. Uh, Asia, yeah, why not? Most you know, I mean, we have so much technology now that we can reach global audiences. It would be foolish to limit ourselves. And I, I've never been one for limitation, especially when it comes to work. I believe in going as far as you can go. And you know, so far we have been able to partner with some people in North America as well. I've partnered here with the Elizabeth James Gallery, um, as well as um, Tropical Mass Association out in Woolwich, okay. um, D Sky Events as well, to deliver also these types of, of projects and okay. so on. And of course, investing a lot of time within the community, the corridor community here through um, the gallery, the different workshops, the live art sessions, the sale of the art, uh, be it on the website or you know when people just come in, um, even Elizabeth who has been doing her jewelry as well. And yes. These are the things that um, you know, you're seeing here, made yes. by hand, out of leather. Mm -hmm. We have um, TM Boutique, yes. who is also doing a lot of jewelry that she crafts by hand. Yes. So everything is made by hand, you know, so no, when you get a piece, we need some from men. <laughs> well, 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 that, that, well that definitely, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. they will be better. Yeah. Like, and, stuff, yeah. And you know, it's it's good. So this is this is. Yeah. I think the gallery here is just like a melted pot for all different types of people, like myself yes. and the Caravan Project, but also like Talia May. Um, with her tea and boutique um, jewelry, uh, Elizabeth James, who is also into photography yeah. and um, doing her leather, leather jewelry, yeah. which is also selling in the US as well. She has an Etsy shop as well. And you know, even people from Italy, this lady here, who's been doing her bangles and so on. And um, it's, it's just a, a great place to be. And you know, I've been so happy working here with, with Elizabeth and James, you know, and just getting this project out to the world, out to the young people, out to the teenagers, out to, you know, even the older people as well. Because even, I tell you, some parents, when they come in, they sit in the sessions, they listen to the story, they have a good laugh, and then they say, so, when are you going to do one for us? <laughs> just for the parents. <laughs> You know, so there has been that request, and certainly it is something that we will be doing this year, um, which is a, a project by itself, and um, it's in the uh, planning stages right now, and it is certainly going to be announced, you know, once we have everything put in place. Okay. okay that sounds good. Um, around the now, um, you know, this has been a great interview, and, you know, I've definitely improved my knowledge on what your know, project is, because yeah. I've still you know, read out about it and stuff. There's only so much you can read in text, I think, you know, speaking to you for, for I don't know, 
two hours or so now, <laughs> I've got so much insight into you know how you know the project is you know shaping up um, and how important and ultimately it is. Um, I mean, you know, I'll just you know, how would you use this in this segment of the the, you know, the podcast to um, to reach out to the community and, and possible collaborators and space owners? Because you, you know, just mentioned you know, like to take projects in the and further and stuff and push envelope and be really involved with more people. You know, so you know what? How would you? I mean, I guess how would you reach out? You know, to, to, to people. What, what, what do you have to say to you know, potential investors, potential collaborators? What would you have to say to them? You know, what, what? What? How can you? You know, how do you invite them on board to get on board you know, with the project? Six words. Yeah. This is the next big thing. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds determined. This <laughs> is the uh-huh. next yeah. big thing. Yeah. Because there is a potential, a yeah. huge potential, to move a lot of goods, a lot of artwork, not only original pieces, but also prints, yes. um, fine art products, cups, mugs. Key change, jewelry, looking at the tourism sector, you know, things like that. And we also have in the works a publication, an anthology of Caribbean stories, mm-hmm. where we're actually collecting stories from every single island in the Caribbean that represents that island. Yeah, yeah. And this is something we want to take to the world. Yeah. So any astute business person would see and would understand the value of what we have here and be willing to invest because we are open to partnership. Yes. We are open to people who share our vision and maybe have the expertise, have the financial resources, have the space, the facilities that you can use. Um, the gallery at Elizabeth James has been wonderful, but we need more space. Because when we had our workshop was yesterday, yesterday, day before, with the, with the, the 23rd uh, it, it, Beavers yeah, group from Croydon, that was on, on Thursday, oh, sorry. Thursday, okay. Yes. So that was the TV. Yeah. We didn't have space to accommodate all of the children. Yeah, I was told you know, like, yeah. 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 So yeah. we had catered for us in the month, but then people registered at the door on the night. To get and to we really had to, because they wanted to be a part of it. And it's so pleasing to see children and to see young people walk away from a workshop totally satisfied with what they have produced, with the experience that they have, and they have something to show and take home and be proud of and share with their friends and share with their family and say, you know, I want to come back, you know, can you help me? What did you use to do this? What did you use to do that? Where can we get it? Things like that. And we are always open to sharing with our community because the gallery has been doing a lot, a lot of outreach into the community here in Croydon, and I think it it, it has well. it has Croydon gone. Croydon is massive. Croydon is massive. Yeah, massive, place. Yeah, Croydon so. is massive. So I mean, and we've yeah, noticed a lot of empty buildings in Croydon. Mm. We need somebody yeah, to give us a space yeah, yeah, that we can conduct these workshops, yeah, that we can yeah. increase it. You know, people who can give us supplies, materials, so that we can do outreach to the community, to the young people, because. School is closing. We have half to, and then we have the summer. People want to have their children involved in positive things, things that will impact so on parents, them. Parents, which are parents. Yeah, yeah their parents. esteem, build yeah. their personalities yeah. from small, you know, and, and, and show them how large the world is and how diverse it is, and not have them continue to walk away with stereotypes that maybe generations before. Yeah continue to believe or would have walked away with and we want to change that so you know of course we are welcoming input partnership investment from businesses to push this project forward it is a global vision this is not just the uk this is not just europe this is the world yeah i felt it when you when you said you know um what was the six words? This is the next, this is the next big, big thing. thing. Yeah, I felt that. You it's know, the like, next big yeah. thing. 
what, what I usually do is, you know, at the end of, and, you know, this, I guess it's probably going to be a trend for you, is at the end of each, um, you know, each episode, I try to get, you know, um, you know, our guests to, I guess, kind of look back on an experience and look back on a certain, um, a certain time in their life, possibly, you know, like they grow up, maybe had a lot of childhood. Um, try to summarize and I guess tell us about an experience that shapes, you know, their vision. You know, what would you say has shaped not just carry about but you as a person, you know, what, what experience would you think people want? What would you say you want? This is shaped the beliefs, this is shaped the projects, this is shaped how you are. You know, because I gather you're a really vibrant person. You know, and you can communicate through your creativity and it's really quite infectious, like you know, looking at our paintings. And so, if you can just summarize and just give us just a brief look into your own experience as a person. Wow. You know, um, when you ask, while you're asking that question, yeah. um, I immediately went back to when I was about six. Okay. Hmm. And I had been living with my mother. She was a single parent of three okay. at that time. And I remember, I can't remember what she told me, but she said I was black. <laughs> Surprise. You need to remind her. Just remind her. <laughs> That's the first time, that, you know, yeah. that something like that ever came to me. And one of her friends said, why are you telling the child that? Don't tell her that. Mm. Or you can tell her she's black. And her response was, so who do you want to tell her? You want somebody to tell her outside. And you know, let her be embarrassed or something like that. And because they know that's a bad thing. No, it's not a bad She's black, she's black, she's beautiful. And let her learn to accept it from now. That is who she is. And I think that at that time, I formed a of section of myself that I didn't have before. Because before I was just a person. Before I was just a child. I knew who I was. I had vision. I had understanding as a child. I knew, even at that age, what I wanted to be and things like that. And then, when they told me that, I realized for the first time that it was how people saw me. Not so much of how I saw myself. And later on, it proved to be quite helpful because I remember going into the primary school and there was a boy who had been bullying me for many years. And in my final year, just before I wrote my common entrance exam, he attacked me and he verbally abused me. And in front of a whole bunch of children who were laughing and then he said, you're so black. Mm. And he said it as if it was a bad thing. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, so what? And, and I'm black, I'm what? I'm beautiful and I'm black. And what? Mm. And he didn't have a response. So he was shocked. <laughs> he was shocked. Because yeah. he expected me to cry. To cry and to pull me down. To pull me down because it was considered an, an insult. Now that looking back then, it was considered an insult. And throughout my life after that, people place limitations on my ability based on the color of my skin. And I've never liked it. And I have always proven them wrong. Yeah. So this is and this is, this is the driving force. This is the driving force. Don't put any limitations on me. Mm. If I tell you my vision is global, mm. so it shall be. So, yeah, yeah. That is what it shall be. Yeah, yeah. So you, 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 you speak it right into existence. I speak it right into, into existence. Into because that is what it is. That is where your power lies. The power of life and death lies in your tongue. It is, yeah. The tongue is powerful. It's very powerful. It is, yeah. And I have spoken it in, into existence. Yeah. And it is. So shall it be. It is. So shall it be. So shall it be. Okay. That's it. That's it. Um, thank you so much. You are. I really, really enjoyed that. It's um, I guess I'll go back and sort of listen to that. And when this comes out, I think it will definitely touch a lot of people. I think that's you know, that's important. That conversation is important. But I hope so, yeah. it does. Yeah, it's because at the end of the day, and as I've always told my students, I've been teaching for more than twenty years. Do not let anyone put limitations on you. 
because of who they think you are or where you have come from or what they think you can do because you can do whatever you put your mind to. Mm -hmm. I had this conversation with Elizabeth mm -hmm. and she said she dropped out of school. Doing art, dropped out of school, now she's the owner of a gallery. And this is something people thought she never would have accomplished. But where are we today? We're sitting here right now. Ah, so it's, yeah. You yeah. believe it, you speak it, and so shall it be. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Um, guys, um, you know, let me know your feedback. Um, that was really, really interesting. I'm into you, so and don't forget our website. Yes, oh yeah, well certainly, yeah. Where can they find the work? So your mm -hmm. Twitter account, what is it called? So we have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Um, you can Google my name, Trisha Trotman Maraj, you will find all this stuff. Yeah. Or you can visit our website at www.caribartcollections.com. Yeah. You can also visit Elizabeth James Gallery online. And there is a link also on Elizabeth James Gallery yeah. that links directly to the project where you will be able to find out more information. Yeah. So I just want to say thanks so much to you no um, worries, today, yeah. today yeah. for yeah. having the interview. Thanks yeah. so much for Elizabeth James and yeah. her gallery yeah. Yeah. and providing the seeding ground for emerging yeah. artists and pro projects. Yeah and diversity yeah. within the borough of Korea, which is something that we need more of. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and that's it. It's a wrap. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs>